In this video, we're going to be covering the new functionality added in Kiosk's 1.1 update. There are some big things there, all the way from making it easier to use to allowing it to do more automated actions for you. So we did want to cover this and make sure everybody knows about these new features. Uh, so before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Drop any questions down there with comments, additional video requests, really anything you're looking to see from us. And last but not least, if you do end up needing help on your Zoho installation, just head on over to Zenata.com, click on that book a meeting button, and we'll be chatting about how we can help in no time. So Kiosk, if you don't know, is a process management tool inside of CRM that essentially allows you to build processes that span across different modules. Nice thing here is the ability to like search for a record in a different module versus where you started, being able to add these on home pages so they're easily accessible for your team. And so what are these new updates? They've added some new functionality to components and they've added some functionality to actions. So the breakdown here is a component is essentially one of the blocks where a user is going to be entering data, searching for records, as well as having decision points, right? Kind of the branches in the process. The actions are essentially the automated things that happen in the transition. So that's creating a task, sending an email, right? Running a custom function. And so what they've done is essentially add a couple new functionalities for components and a few for actions. So we're gonna go through each of those in detail. Nice thing is with this article, which we'll drop a link to in the description down below, they include these little kind of videos where we can take a look at exactly what we're gonna see when we jump in. So we're now able to add titles to kiosk screens. This is essentially where when you're in one of those transitions, you can have a proper header that is big and it is bold and it kind of highlights exactly what that step is going to do rather than just being able to add kind of a standard looking text box that shows it. Um, these will be bigger, bolder, more visible to the team so that they're able to easily see this when they open up a record. We've also got the ability to add percentages, URLs, and decimals as a part of this flow. One nice thing to keep in mind is these fields can actually pull data from a record. So in the case of a URL, you could actually now show someone a clickable URL as part of a transition. And these will also be enterable by the team when they are actually moving through the kiosk process. So again, they break down each of these, you know what the fields are, so we don't need to spend too much time there. We can also now add a default path name. So this essentially those paths are the steps between components. You can set what that default name should be without having to go into each and every one and specifically update it. Now to the back half of the updates here when we're talking about actions. So again, these are those things that happen between the screens that run automated activities for us. Really, I would say this one here is the biggest and most important. So now using those actions, you can convert leads, schedule meetings and arrange calls directly to that particular record. So one use case that we've seen a lot of for kiosk is uh, managing lead processing right? Maybe you're selecting products that are relevant for the lead. Maybe you're searching for accounts to say like, hey, if that account already exists, let's automatically convert the lead, um, right? There's a lot of these processes that can be made much easier when using kiosks. So now you'll be able to come in, set up an automated conversion, right? Where you're essentially going to choose, are we creating accounts? Are we also creating deals? Where do we want all of that data to go? Quick little tip there with the conversion data, that's still going to be set the same way under the lead conversion options. Um, and here you'll just be able to map uh, custom fields directly to the deal, right? Because that's where things get a little bit more flexible. So that will now be supported as a part of the kiosk process. We'll also be able to set meetings directly from here. Again, sometimes you might have a user enter in a date and time field and then pull that into the meeting. You could also have it set up to just be a default number of days from the particular trigger, basically moving through that transition. You'll want to make the determination of if this needs to be set at a custom time or a standardized time just based on what you uh, specifically need as a part of your process. 
We'll also be able to do that same thing for calls. Again, calls work a lot like meetings. They happen at a certain date and time. They have a certain duration. It's oftentimes just that we don't know what the end time will be because calls are going to be more variable. Sometimes you're off the phone in five minutes. Sometimes you're off the phone in 20. Whereas something like a meeting, we're generally going to know when that's going to end at the time that it's being scheduled. But you'll be able to essentially set up those calls directly as a part of the kiosk. So really, each of these three, I would say Zoho is probably thinking about lead processing, right? You're going to have these meetings, you're going to have these calls, then you're going to convert that lead once they've hit certain qualification criteria. We do have that reminder here. We're now going to be able to use the merge fields from our CRM data in many more places. One of the things that we think about here is field updates, right? So in Kiosk, originally, when we were doing a field update, you essentially had to hard code in a value. Now you'll be able to pull in a merged value from my kiosk to go back to that record, right? So let's say that you are building a kiosk to update a lead status. Before this update, if the user were to select cold, hot, warm, whatever those statuses may be, you'd actually need to either use code to update that field uh, dynamically based on the decision, or you would need to have a decision tree for each of those statuses to do a hard-coded field update. Now you're basically just able to pull from the previous entries into the kiosk to go back and update that original field. So big time saver there, especially if you're not very comfortable with Deluge, or if you're trying to build this out in a way where someone in the future isn't going to need Deluge to manage it, this is a very, very nice update. So again, basically short story here is we're now able to much more easily take an input that was entered by a user in the kiosk and write it directly to a record without needing any code or doing crazy things with decision trees. Next one here is in that create record action. So as a part of a kiosk, you have a pre-baked action block where you can feed in data to create a record. This exists in workflows and blueprints as well. So you may have played around with it before. Um, but essentially, this is just eliminating the need for Deluge to create a record as a part of a process. Now, what we're able to do is, again, similar to up above, we're able to much more dynamically choose what data should go where when we're creating that record. So if we're looking at the little video recording here, we're essentially coming in, we're creating a module, and we're now able to hit pound and merge in data from a previous step in our flow into this record creation. Just keeping in mind, the goal here is always limiting the amount of deluge that we need to write in order to do these types of activities. While we're here, that's kind of everything for our updates. I will highlight they've got a lot on the roadmap for Kiosk. It's definitely a good idea to start building in this tool. So being able to bring in third-party applications, this is really exciting. Think about if you have some other database of insurance policies and we want to pick one, right? Now we'll be able to bring that in. You'll be able to do a get records uh, a lot more easily and pull in as a table. And we're going to have Kiosk Studio supporting Zoho Flow Actions, which is like that little unique integration between CRM and Flow. A big, big, big one is open URL and open record. This open record is one of the biggest limitations right now. So think about as a kiosk, you are doing a process where a deal is going to be created. Currently, the only way you can get them to that deal is basically giving them the URL back and saying, copy paste this. Soon, we'll be able to do a proper open record where it's just going to automatically open the record that was created as part of the kiosk. We're going to be able to clone and reorder buttons. That's a minor one, but reordering buttons is really nice to have. The only way to do that now is to remove buttons and then add them back in the order that you want them to show. Less than ideal. We're going to have some more flexibility in connecting paths. We're going to be able to reuse fields that are a part of screens. And then we'll be able to pass or using responses in the next set of actions. Again, this is that idea of I create a record, it gives me back the ID, and then I use that to add a URL somewhere else to that particular next action. So overall, great round of updates here. I would say the big ones to play with is this convert, add meeting, and add calls, and then all of this ability to now merge additional data into the next steps, whether it's creating a new record or doing something else 
as a part of your kiosk workflow. We're thinking about doing these more often where we kind of pick out a really big news story for the week, maybe highlight it in a bit more detail than we normally go into on the CRM Zen show. So again, leave us a comment down below. If you made it to the end here, you are definitely a diehard. We want your opinion. So let us know what you think. Are these videos useful? Would it be better if I do this in the application instead rather than just going through the news article? Let us know what you think down there in the comments section below. Uh, Make sure as well, leave us a like, subscribe if you find it useful. We always appreciate that. And we'll see you on the next tip video from Zanata Consulting. Thanks for watching.